Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm just pinning the, the, the topic. Hi, Frank. Just a second. I'm going to invite you. Just trying to pin the topic as usual. Uh, oops. It always... Sorry, guys. Hang on. Bear with me. I don't know. Okay. Yes, finally. Great. Uh, huh. And then... Yeah. Oops. Hello. Hello. Hi, Frank. Good evening. Good evening, how are you? Good. And yourself? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> As usual. So how was your day? What did you do uh, today? Let me guess. You... Should I oops, you're you froze. Oops. Uh... You're coming back? Yes. Now I see you. Yeah, I you got your your image got frozen. Yeah, seems to be good now. Yeah, okay, yeah. you were you were trying to guess what I did today. Yeah, I was wondering whether you did anything else than staying at home. Actually, I did, but I'm not supposed to tell it <laughs> because I'm not allowed to do what I did today. So <laughs> maybe I'll tell it later. <laughs> That's maybe room in Spain. No, yeah, <laughs> I mean, there are so many Turks in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. great. Uh, so hi, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Uh, we are going to talk about how to define quality in wine. Exactly. And actually, today, it's going to be our last session of this week, right? Yeah, we, we guess so, no, because of Easter Easter weekend, uh, Good Friday, yeah, Easter Monday, Monday. Which is fine, I'm not sure yet, but anyway, we've got a weekend ahead. Uh, on the other hand, nobody's going to leave this weekend, no. <laughs> Everybody in Europe is going to stay home. Stay home. Oh, my God, this is the most boring yeah. Easter weekend ever. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but maybe we can, I think, I mean, even though we're going to be home, but we will be doing some uh, online sessions with the family. So it's also good to have one day or two not to do anything and just relax. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. Okay. So let's make the best out of our last session of this week. Yes. Okay. So how to define the quality in wine? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I was I was also thinking, is it easier to define the quality or is it easier to de detect the quality? It's both not well. It's two different questions, no? Mm. But to detect quality, I mean, um, uh, what you notice in 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 courses as a teacher is that. Uh, you know, everybody who starts a wine course, even if it is a uh, basic level, WCT level two, for example, mm -hmm. um, things that he or she is capable of detecting quality. But actually, to be honest, as soon as you, as soon as you go to blind tasting, um, well, let's say apparently not, because people sometimes get it completely wrong. So mm -hmm. funny enough, it's it's not that easy. But but of course, it depends on how you define quality. But um, but I can give you many examples. Uh, for example, I'm still talking about how to de whether uh, how to detect quality. But we mm -hmm. we in our um, WCT level three examinations. And when I say our, I mean the ones where I uh, are supervi I'm supervising and, and correcting the exams, and that's that's actually all over Europe. Yeah, from Russia mm -hmm. to, to Spain and, and many countries in between. Um, quite often, if we put um, very cheap, very simple white wines, like, you know, really three euro supermarket Pinot Grigio or so, whatever, P 
people come with very good quality, great wine, good complexity, mm -hmm. perfect balance. You know, what the hell, you know, with three, <laughs> four wine? And, and so people can get it completely wrong. It's not, it's, it's, well, let's put it like this. It's not as easy as you, as you would think, actually. It is very easy if you see the label. That mm -hmm. is very easy to, to detect quality. But if mm -hmm. you don't, ha, it becomes a different story sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, some people will now say, yeah, but that all depends on how you define quality. And that is indeed the, the second question. And, and what I have noticed, I've got a very clear idea about how you define quality. I do. Mm -hmm. um, but um, um, but the, the, the definition of quality in wine, let me put it like this. I think 40, 30 years ago, everybody would have agreed with, with me, let's say, generally speaking. Not about me. It's not that I invented it. But we were all mm -hmm. having the sort of the same idea about what quality is and what isn't. But nowadays, um, I mean... Um, Let's take an extreme example. There are plenty of people nowadays who would say if it's not a natural wine, if they've used sulfur in the winemaking process, then this cannot be a great wine. I do not at all agree with that. But it's just to show you that actually um, the, the definition of quality has become very sort of uh, fluid. Let's put it like mm -hmm. this. So what is your own definition of quality? I think um, for me, quality is, uh, is uh, thinking of uh, the length of a wine, of the intensity of a wine, of the balance of a wine, and the complexity of a wine. And it's, it's actually it's, it's nothing different from what WCT will teach you. But basically, all you, although you would use slightly different words, I think if you would... Uh, uh, consider quality in the Master of Wine examination um, or, or in other wine courses, you would come to more or less the same definition. Mm -hmm. But you know, the wine of the world of wine has changed for good and for bad. I'm not, I'm not just, uh, I'm certainly not somebody who is always uh, thinking about the, the good old times because, in many, many ways, the wine world has become much better, much more interesting than, than it was before. But um, you know, in, 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 in these days, and maybe it, it has to do with, with the digital society and with the social um, um, uh, social uh, media. Social, so, sorry, yeah, I couldn't find the word. Mm -hmm. Social media. Um, because with social media, media, everybody is a wine expert and everybody has yeah. an opinion and everybody is a journalist and everybody can be a wine writer. And, uh, and the whole thing has become much more, much more fluid, much more unclear as it, mm -hmm. as it used to be. Yeah? I sometimes mm -hmm. see this, this period as a sort of a counter reaction to the Parker times. In the Parker times, uh, quality was very clearly defined. And actually with Parker, there was maybe also a factor brought in called concentration, which I would mm -hmm. not, not necessarily see as quality. Um, but in any case, uh, maybe these days are sort of the counter reaction on the park at times, and it's it's the, the sort of the pendulum swung completely in the uh, opposite direction now. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about elegance in wine before, yeah. right? so people are using elegance as a as a quality uh, factor. I cannot mm -hmm. agree with that, but I already explained why that that's wrong. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thinking yeah. about quality has really changed. Yeah. And, and also and, on the level of journalists. Yeah. And actually, uh, because you were mentioning WSET and also everyone is becoming a wine expert, I just want to mention something. Uh, WSET, I think the systematic approach of WSET like, really teaches really uh, how to understand the quality of wine because it makes you to kind of get away a little bit from the appreciation and the preference because the quality of wine is not your preference or if you appreciate that wine or not. So WACT gives you like what to look to understand the quality. But on the other hand, even everyone, like the, the people who are doing level one and level two, all of a sudden, they're like wine experts. Exactly. <laughs> you know? exactly. They're judging I've wines and stuff. Media. People yeah. who have done the level two course uh, call themselves on LinkedIn a wine expert and thinking, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say that you that only a master of wine is a wine expert. That's not what I mean. But to yeah. say after one basic course, I'm a wine expert. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah. And wine. also, especially with level one, they don't teach you how to how to do a blind tasting. And level no. two, yes, they do, but there's no exam for blind tasting. No, no, no. There's only theory. Exactly. So it's that kind of. <laughs> Exactly. Of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and also the other side, I think the quality of wine mm -hmm. is also very different than commercial success of the wine, because mm -hmm. all the wine makers and wine sellers they kind of brag about uh, the quality and the wine critics and the points awards that they get. Of course, it can maybe lead to a commercial success because in the end it's marketing, sure. but it is not really defining the quality of the wine. No, no, not at all. And no, I mean the the uh, we could we could uh, do another session on the on uh, on one rating on a hundred score uh, uh, scoring on a um, hundred mm -hmm. points, etc. But um, no, that's not that. That's it's it's completely depends on who's judging, of course. But whether you talk about medals, I mean the whole medal business, uh, the gold and silver medals, all that, it's complete rubbish. It doesn't doesn't have much to do with quality um, um, it's there, but, but again you know it's 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 not that easy to define quality I would like to give a, a, a nice example sure. um, uh, a good friend of mine master of wine Philip Schwander from uh, Switzerland mm -hmm. uh, he likes to do blind tastings showing very famous very expensive uh, very highly rated wines in a blind tasting against much cheaper alternatives that he actually imports himself because that that is mm -hmm. his business he, he tries to find really good value for money and i'm mm -hmm. i'm ashamed to say we've, we've done a few of those sessions i usually get it right but i see you sometimes i also get it completely wrong and i'm really ashamed to say you know we were mm -hmm. we were well, ashamed but just to show you how it is but uh, i remember for example last time where he showed uh, krug well, we didn't mm -hmm. know it was crude. We just, he showed two champagnes. Um, they, were, they were both really nice. And he said, well, one of them is a very famous, expensive uh, uh, champagne. And the other one is uh, not at all famous and much cheaper. And it was mm -hmm. actually Krug against uh, uh, the Brut Sans Année of uh, René Pouillon, which is a good grower. Mm -hmm. It's really a good grower. And, you know, so, the, and we were in a, with a group with, which was, they were all wine lovers and wine experts and really big time wine experts, a number of masters of wine and a very mixed group, but all of them uh, high, high level uh, tasters. And, and the result was really 50, 50. And, and I was actually one of the people who thought that the Pouillon was the expensive wine. I got it completely wrong. Mm -hmm. but, um, I was embarrassed. Well, I wasn't embarrassed, but in a way, I was thinking, "Jesus, I, I, I couldn't imagine this would that, that I would get that wrong." But I did, mm -hmm. you know. Which is, which is once again to show how how difficult it it can difficult, be. Difficult, yeah. 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 But what, I, but what I don't like is when people are mm -hmm. bringing in uh, external factors like uh, the like. Uh, uh, whether the wine is organic or not, or biodynamic or not, or natural or not, because that has nothing to do with quality. That has to do with how you look at, at nature, how you look at life, and how you look at sustainability, whatever. And I appreciate that, and I understand that. But don't mix that up with quality. That's yeah. a different discussion. Yeah, I think it's a little bit getting influenced by the trends. Because now we have a trend of natural wine making, so that the yeah, old natural wines are good yeah. quality. Yeah. But it's I, it's a little bit of oxymoron because yeah. most of the natural wines are not good quality. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, but say that to natural wine lovers and they will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> they will but, ban us uh, from. But there, there, and there are actually very. We did a tasting in January with my good friend uh, Gernot Heinrich. Uh, from Burgenland, who completely switched to natural wine approach in his in his one million bottle winery and a very mm, courageous wow. step. But but Gernot is a is a very good winemaker and he knows what he's doing. He was a great winemaker before he turned to natural wine, and of course his wines are still very good. Although not everybody will appreciate them as much as they did before, but nevertheless his wines are still very good. 
But for mm. that, you've got numbers of idiots who know nothing about winemaking, but get away with their mistakes. They call it natural because they call it natural wine. Natural wine. Uh, yeah. that, uh, I've got many of, them, but, but but just to say that there are, of course, also very good natural wines. Absolutely. Nice, yeah. But that's, it's not that they are very good because they're natural. They are very good mm -hmm. and natural. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're that's good right. and natural. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I there's really uh, other aspects of this uh, topic but now i want to read a few questions and actually now we have many regulars that who attend to each session and ask questions yeah. so i want to honor them and i'm just looking for the questions um uh, one question here from matia how would you define quality in one uncomplex wine aged only in stainless steel Well, the definition stays the same, mm -hmm. um, but it, um, it, it probably becomes more difficult to talk about great wine, really, you know, like very high quality, very high quality standard if, if the wine is only made that way. But, but there, there's always, an ex there are mm -hmm. always um, um, examples that, that, that will prove that wrong because... Uh, What, what immediately comes to mind is, of course, uh, some, some beautiful Rieslings from Germany. Uh, some of them are... Uh, I have one here. Are, yeah, <laughs> yeah, some of them are, are, are fermented on stainless steel. There are, there are wonderful champagnes that were uh, fermented on stainless steel. But, of course, with aging, etc., they change and uh, aging on the lease. But, yeah, but, but, but it is true that... Um, uh, In, in many mm -hmm. cases, probably in the majority of great wines, oak, oak aging actually plays a role. That is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. uh, we may not like it, but it is true. But then what are we, then, then again, going back, then what are we talking about? How do we define quality here? Are we talking about quality only in fine wines or quality also applies the same to the commodity wines? Because many community wines, they don't have oak either, but they can be good quality. Yeah, 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 of course, of course, of course they can. But, but for me, the, the, and, and this is actually where the whole uh, rating system come, becomes problematic. Because mm -hmm. if, if you look at the 100 point system, the way it is being used, mm -hmm. whether it is Parker or the Wine Spectator or anyone else, What they all do is they, they are bearing the price in, in mind. Um, if Parker, Robert Parker, the man, and that was my main criticism. I, I, I've always been a fan of Parker, don't get me wrong. So I'm the last one to, to start with Parker Bashing. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing he always got wrong, after my opinion, is that he was giving uh, an excellent price quality rate of wines. Like uh, I, I remember, for example... Uh, Really well made, very cheap uh, red wine from Terra Alta, from a cooperative, actually from a friend of mine, Joan Maria. I mean, the wine was good, really, eh? but it was a cheap wine and it got 92 points. And that mm -hmm. is ridiculous because 92 points is what Parker also gave to Leo Villas Casa in a weaker vintage. I'm sorry, but Leo Villas Casa in the weakest vintage is still better than that Terra Alta wine. So that, that's where it goes wrong. Um, mm -hmm. I would believe that if you if you strictly and I would do it very strictly and that is probably why I never became a famous wine writer, but um, I, I I will never bash high volume wines. I won't because they're always good. They're well made. You you won't get any mistakes. Um, but but lots of those wines you couldn't rate any higher than I don't know somewhere in the early eighty points, mm -hmm. you know, in the lower eighty points. Which, but it depends, of course, on how you look at it. But um, in the Netherlands, uh, uh, we grade at school from zero to 10. If you've got eight on 10 in the Netherlands for any examinations, you are really one of the better students. You're not brilliant, mm -hmm. because brilliant is nine and more. But eight is really good, then you master your subject. So, you know, for me, 80 points on a wine, that's not bad at all. But mm -hmm. nowadays, that's total crap. 80 points. It means it's the worst of the worst, almost. Yeah. Uh, and that, and yeah. that's of course where where it went wrong, and that has to do 
But okay, rating wine is not exactly as judging the same as judging quality, although it pretends it does, of course. Yeah. So right. I think maybe we can do another session about that because also there is one thing that I think it makes me to think when you do judge when you judge in the competitions. Uh, okay, one thing to me yeah. defining the quality apart from the uh, the complexity, depth, and everything balance. But also typicity to me is also important if we are talking about varieties or the regions. If it is typicity of one particular varietal or region, then it's also a quality sign, could be. But I think in the competitions, most of the competitions that are participated, they tell you, they give you the range of yep. the wine or the category and then you rate within that category. You do. Yes. Yeah, so you can rate and you can give uh, 93 points within one category, but then you can give 93 in other category, but those categories that you cannot compare and contrast. No. So then, but both wines have 93 points. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, may, maybe I'm, I'm in my thinking, I'm too mathematical and too strict about it, but um, but that's another reason why I think uh, the whole metal thing uh, usually sucks and goes wrong. But, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but you know, uh, you know what? I'll tell you another story. Um, two years ago, we did. We I was invited together with um, I think four other masters of wine and four wine academica to do a, mm -hmm. um, 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 wine judging in Russia of Russian wines, with the purpose of uh, applying uh, medals, so, so bronze, silver, and gold. And I'm, I'm actually here, I'm really embarrassed to say that uh, after half a day, a huge discussion started between the masters of wine about what quality actually meant. And I was thinking, there you've got it, that, that's the problem. So even amongst masters of wine, we seem to have uh, different meanings, some different ideas sometimes about how you really define quality. And I, f I, find, that, I find that annoying because in a way, I mean, we, when we talk about wine, we talk about quality all the time, but apparently we all mean something different about it. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's that's crazy, actually. You know, in that respect, uh, the wine world sometimes resembles the art world. You know. Mm -hmm. Actually, one funny thing about that: uh, last year um, there was one competition in Turkey. Uh, Taner Ortolu prepared that. It was they were doing. Um, international wine challenge style but they did something different they did uh, two days or it was two days of competition and the last day um, the chairmen of each you know how do you say the chairs of uh, each uh, group yeah. or board sure. they five people uh, and two of them were master of wines they were discussing the wines judging the wines open public like oh, yeah. publicly, sure. Sure. so we could we could hear their judgments. Yeah. And yes, they were not really agreeing no. in between themselves. No, no. Yeah. 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 Think, and yeah. Yeah. What are what other questions do we have? Because I saw yes, so here, but I wasn't able to read them. Yes, yeah, so Gonja has two questions. One of them was the prior prior question asking to you what is for you what is the most important element of quality. And then the second question of hers, price performance ratio should be one of the quality parameters, although it's never mentioned, for example, WACT for WACT. What do you think about it? What, what was that? What price? Uh, price performance ratio should no. be one of the quality parameters. No, I, I think price has nothing to do with quality. I'm sorry, but uh, mm. I, I, I never liked that, actually, that... You know, sometimes you have a tasting, a, a tasting, and, and, and let's say you, you, you're tasting a great wine and everybody agrees and then you reveal what it is and it's an expensive wine. And then some people react like, yeah, but okay, for that money, of course, it's a very good wine. Like, like you know, it, that goes without saying. I find that a strange reaction. Or sometimes you ask somebody, what do you feel? What do you think about this wine? And then, and then they say, uh, what is the price? I said, well, what's, what does that have to do with it? Yeah. Just tell me how you, how you think the wine is. Is it good? Is it not good? Is it really good? Um, no, man, the, the price doesn't. For me, the price, when I judge quality, I'm not thinking of the price. I don't care about the price. Quality is quality, mm -hmm. you know. Um, um, 
I mean, if you would if you would ask me, do you think this is a very good wine for this given price of six euros? Yeah, okay, I would mm -hmm. say, yeah, of course, for six euros is a very good wine. But if, but I don't like that kind of questions unless I'm mm -hmm. a buyer. Huh? Mm -hmm. But if I am um, um, uh, just just judging quality, I don't I I don't care about price, whether the wine is cheap or expensive. I want to judge the wine as it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what was the yeah. and what was the first part of the question again? Um... In, amongst the elements of how to define quality, what is the most important one for you? Mm. I guess it's balance, but I measure it by length. I think mm. with length, you can take a, a sort of a snapshot of a wine and, and very quickly decide this is, a, this is a good wine or it's not a very good wine. You know, um, length, length tells you very quickly something. Uh, because an unbalanced wine won't have a good length, and a balanced wine will have a better length, etc. But uh, but I suppose so. Length is more like there's a parameter through which you judge if you want to judge quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. But otherwise, uh, length being, I think, yeah, most of all the result of balance. I suppose that balance is the is the is the important factor here. Uh, but if it is balance and length, but one dimensional. Mm, that rarely happens. Yeah? Yeah. Do you know any uh, one-dimensional wine with a very good length? I, uh, Savignon Blanc? I cannot Blanc? imagine one. one. Savignon Blanc? Depends, no, obviously. No, no, from no. A... Because if you take, for example, I mean, there, there are so, there's not much, but there are great Sauvignon Blancs in the world. Uh, sometimes the, the variety is a bit underestimated. Yeah. But if you take a DJ Dagano uh, Silex, <laughs> Uh, Obviously, that's why it has great length, and it's not at all one-dimensional, of course. Mm -hmm. Not at yeah, all. Yeah, obviously. And, yeah. and actually, it's also not typical, because I bet that in a blind tasting, most people wouldn't recognize this as a Sauvignon Blanc. So that's actually where I come back to a remark you made before: typicity. Mm -hmm. Where I was already frowning a bit, thinking, "Yeah, well, typicity. I'm not so okay. sure because." What is typicity, actually? You know, how how do you define what is typical? That's 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 another discussion, actually. No discussion, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's so many things to yeah. to to talk about this. Um, there is one more question here. Uh, Real no, quality sorry. wine shows the aging potential, isn't it? Yeah, but I was going to read the one prior. Okay. But yeah, well, uh, the one, yeah. yeah. Well, let me answer that, but I don't yeah, understand yeah, that please. question. The real quality of wine shows the aging potential, isn't it? Ah, it's Patrick, I think. Patrick Wartman. Yeah. Hart or Hartman. Ah, Patrick Hartman. Um, hi, Patrick. No, it depends on... Um, but, but that's not a good... I don't know. The English is, is a bit wrong, I think. That's that's not a good sentence. I'm not sure what it really means. So it means... I think he means the quality of pot uh, potential, aging potential. Is it a sign of quality of wine? Or a good quality oh. wine shows aging potential? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The two are mm -hmm. linked. Yes, the two are linked. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And another question from Gourmet Spain. Are there any wines that you have recently tried and have surprised you in terms of quality? Mm. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. It happens all the time, actually. I was, but, you know, maybe in the, not at the level of the very, very best wines, but I was, uh, as my work, in my work as a supermarket buyer in Russia, I'm currently uh, receiving everyday uh, samples from all over Europe uh, of wines to taste from producers, you know, we, we miss pro wine, we miss Fin Italy. Mm -hmm. So we, we tried to catch up with, uh, with wine producers by email and by phone. And uh, many of them started sending samples because that's what you do at a wine fair. You show new wines, you show other wines. And um, actually I got a, a range of generic Bordeaux wines, like generic Lussac Saint-Emilion, generic Bordeaux Rouge, generic, um, I forgot, uh, Medoc. Mm -hmm. Doc, uh, coming from a négociant in Bordeaux uh, called uh, J. Lebeg, which is a négociant in Saint-Emilion. And I must say, I was actually really impressed by the quality. Yeah, I was really impressed. Mm -hmm. So, not great wines, but, you know, from, from for what they were, like very affordable, generic Appalachian wines from Bordeaux, 
they were really very good mm -hmm. friends. And I was, yeah, I was very positively surprised. That's just an example. That I'm, example, yeah. I mean, and that doesn't happen too often because usually if I receive samples, I have a certain expectation and, and usually it comes through. And I have to say, if I don't, if I do not, I have enough experience to, to make a, a rather good judgment on paper. So it's so really poor stuff, which I know will be poor. I'm telling people, uh, please don't send it to me. I, I know mm -hmm. what's going to be. And I may buy it because I need something cheap or whatever. But usually I would say, well, I don't want that. And please don't, mm -hmm. don't send me samples. So it's, it's not that I'm very often surprised. But it happens. Yeah, it happens. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, Robin uh, says a comment. Uh, thank you, Frank and Rem. Great Subject quality in wine inherently subjective. However, good job in digging deep. Lots of lots to think about. Actually, yes, I think it's subjective to yeah. many people. Mm -hmm. The quality of wine. Yeah. But I think, I or at least I want to think to expert tasters. Mm -hmm. At least it shouldn't be subjective, but still it is somehow it's subjective. Yeah. Well, I I always say that uh, you you. 100% objective is not possible. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. It doesn't exist in wine. 100% objective. But you should at least try. And there are too many people, also professionals, who do not even try. Maybe mm -hmm. subconsciously, but they don't try. And that's what that really bothers and irritates me. Yeah. 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 Okay, actually, there's still more questions about this topic. It's a really uh, hip, hip topic at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we can, I don't know, do you, want, do you have time? Do you want to answer two more questions or should we yeah, just call it off? Two more. And then we... Okay, two yeah. more. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, concentration of aromas and flavors, how important is as a per meter? Concentration of, I think concentration in the nose not so much, but on the palate yes. I I always you know I I I often use a word that I call fruit concentration, which is not exactly the right word, but I I try to define mm -hmm. sort of the concentration of flavor coming from the grape, huh? and and mm -hmm. that is a that is something important, but it it is directly linked to length actually, because a wine with a good what I call fruit concentration will also have a good length. The length, sure. yeah. Unless it's, uh, very Unless it's very young. Unless it's very young. And then it may also have better aging potential, obviously, depending on other things. But if the, or at least it can hang on better. In many cases. No? With many In cases. cases. Provided okay. there's also a good balance, yeah. And uh, last question that we're going to answer from Gio Brumat. And this is also related to the competition. So I think I we should do. make it. Uh, I think we should make a session about that in wine competition is it better to divide flights bar by specification example by type region grape variety or generalization example same grape variety from different parts of the world i think both is possible but i think the most important with uh, with wine judging uh, competitions is that the organization comes with very clear instructions on what they expect and what they what they they want the judges to do mm -hmm. i remember um i i rarely do them because i generally uh, hate them because they are usually not good these competitions and i'm actually not a big fan of doing that kind of work sitting down for two three days with a group of people tasting wines and blah 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 um, but in the few occasions that I did accept the, invi the invitation to do it, and by the way, it usually doesn't pay, which is another reason why I'm not doing it. There's better, th better things to do. But um, the, um, um, you know, um, for example, um, I once did a, a judging in uh, South Africa for Veritas, mm -hmm. and um, they had a, they had very clear instructions. They said, in every year, we want to select the very best wines in different categories for, for that vintage. And those mm -hmm. will be the ones with the gold medal. That means that in a weaker vintage, although of course in South Africa, the vintage variation is not that important, but in a weaker vintage, your, your standards will also go a little bit down actually. And, um, and if that is clear, 
I'm okay with that. In contrast to that, I once was asked to judge in uh, Prague, Czech wines, mm -hmm. um, and there they said that we had to use the OIV system and judge the wines according international OIV standards. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And uh, with all due respect to Czech wines, but I, I couldn't find wines that were much better on an international scale than 17 points, 17.5 on a scale of 20. And I thought I was already quite generous with that. Um, I got criticized for it. They never asked me back again, <laughs> which is fine, which is fine. I wasn't, uh, I, was, um, uh, I didn't feel insulted. But uh, um, but but there I was thinking, yeah, but but now you get it, you know, this is wrong, because some people were judging wines with, uh, well, the other people were judging the wines all the time with 18, 19 points. And, and the, what the winemakers do after that is they say, look, I got 19 points out of 20 from, a, from a, a judges, including a number of masters of wine. And look, uh, and then they point at uh, wines from France or whatever, uh, much more expensive wines. They got 19 points as well. And they say, you see, we're on the same level. Okay. And that's simply not true. And, and that was my, my answer when, when at one stage uh, uh, I got criticized for marking so, so, so low. The, the, the chair said, why are you so low? I said, well, actually, my question to you, to you is why are you so high? Mm -hmm. we, just, we just had a red wine, a Czech red wine, and somebody judged it with 19.5. And I literally said 19.5 is what I give or what everybody gives to Chateau Latour and the Great Vintage. Do you really mm -hmm. think that that yeah. Czech red wine is the quality of a Chateau Latour in a Great Vintage? And nobody answered. And mm -hmm. of course it wasn't. It was a respectable yeah. wine that's got nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's when I got uh, irritated. Yes, yeah. and, uh, I think there should be categories huh? in hmm? in competition. I think it should there should be categories in competition. There should be categories, and they should be clear about what they are exactly uh, exactly uh, judging and how they they want the ones to be judged. But yeah. uh, in the case of of the Czech Czech, but they're not the only ones, sir. Huh? But uh, because many of these competitions work that way, as as I just as I just mentioned uh, uh, for Czech Republic, but. Um, um, they didn't ask me again, but if they would, I wouldn't have done it anyway. Mm -hmm. I, cannot, okay. I cannot agree with that approach. Yeah. Good. Let's so we will, we'll, yeah, we will uh, make another yeah. session about that, we about the competitions. Week. We can yeah. About okay. That. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll see you guys next week because Friday is Easter. We're not going to do any session on Monday. No. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, just a comment. Turgut from Turkey joins. Turgut, you joined late. But make sure to watch the session because he's a Master of Wine student. So I think it will be interesting for you to watch the session. Um, yes. Ah, by the way, uh, Irina says, what about champagne masterclass with Frank? Maybe we can do a topic about champagne next week. Mm, or yeah, the other week. Yeah, yeah. Or, sure. or, Eskimo, or bubbles. Or 30 minutes is, uh... But we can think. Yeah, yeah we we'll, can we'll think, think about it. We'll think okay, great. Uh, I see a few more questions, but we'll come to that next week because we'll do another session about that. Thank yep. you, guys. Thank you, Frank. Everybody, have happy a very Easter. Nice Easter weekend. I'm sorry that we all have to stay at home and be bored, but uh, open a good bottle, bottle. have a good meal with the, with the few loved ones around you, and uh, but stay at distance and uh, hope to see you soon, see in, you soon. Uh, in, a, in a healthy state state and happy and <laughs> healthy happy, happy and with wine happy. 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 okay great bye bye, bye, bye bye everyone bye frank Oops. before just uh, finishing the session i'm just trying to take a screenshot of the last questions that we couldn't answer so then i'll make sure we have answers to that next week. Um, okay. I think I recorded all the questions. Let me just check. Okay. Ah, too good. Yeah, I just see that you were confused with the time. Yes, watch the recording. I'm going to put it. Okay. You shouldn't touch so much to the phone. Okay, guys, bye.